Welcome, welcome AES. Um, this is a first for a lot of us and uh, certainly a first for me. We have a virtual New York AES. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's going to look like on the other end, but we're going to try to be as non-virtual as possible. Um, today's panel, and that is exactly what it is, has a long title. Let me read you the official title, and then we'll talk about what we're really going to talk about building a world-class audio production facility in emerging global communities. Boy, that's a mouthful. I'm not quite sure who wrote that. Certainly not me. Um, and I guess we're going to, what we're going to explore is um, studio or production studio facilities um, in countries other than the United States and England and um, how we, our group, WSDG, Walter Stork Design Group, how we've um, traveled uh, on this voyage. We've been doing this for a long time. As you know, we have offices in a number of countries. Um, some of our experiences, difficulties, problems, um, flash some eye candy for you to enjoy. I think you'll, you'll love seeing uh, some of the studios that we've created and maybe pose a few questions to our panel. Um, my job is easy because all I really have to do is introduce Sergio Mojo, uh, dear friend, longtime partner, director of international business development, um, for WSDG, he has uh, 40 years of experience in pro audio, like all of us, a pretty good musician, although we get to hang out with much better musicians, um, has owned a studio in Argentina. He has now resettled for a number of years in Miami, runs our Latin American office uh, out of there. And um, so I have the easy job. He's got the hard job because he has to do all the work for the next 88 minutes. And um, I'm, we have some. We have a, a very interesting panel um, representing people from Colombia, um, the Middle East, uh, Spain, China. So we're the, the timing on this is uh, we had to span uh, about 12 time zones. For your information, it's 10 o'clock Eastern uh, time right now uh, on this pre-recorded uh, panel, but. Um, some of our people are, it's, it's, it's the middle of the evening or the middle of the afternoon. So thank you, Zoom, for allowing that to happen. Serge, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to let you introduce people, and I'm going to let you take us through this very interesting journey. Welcome. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So again, welcome, everybody. Thanks for attending to this uh, virtual Zoom, on demand in this case. But uh, anyway, it's going to be interesting. Uh, John Storick had introduce me and uh, you know John. John is one of the icons in acoustic design uh, from his uh, debut in this scene in 1969 the uh, design in Electric Lady Studio for Jimi Hendrix. Okay, she's a registered architect graduated from Princeton and Columbia and is the founding partner of Walter's Storic Design Group, WCG. And by the way, is my personal friend and my mentor and uh, he's going to also help us guiding this tour through different cultures, regions, and, and projects all over the world. Uh, with us today, we also have Mills Su. Mills, you can wave. Uh, okay, that's good. Mills is from China. He's based in Beijing. Uh, he's a computer programmer uh, that turned into the senior business development director uh, for from Ericsson to Body Group, that is his mm -hmm. actual uh, task, and where he developed key marketing and operational capabilities, and he's one of the top key brand communicators in China industry, in the pro audio industry, and is the founder and chief marketing offers, officer of 55 Tech Studios in Beijing, China, that will be sharing his expertise today. Also with us, we have Mark Biadiu. Mark, uh, it's uh, WCG Spain, Africa, and Middle East representative. And Mark studied technical engineering in sound and image and higher engineering in electronics in the University of Ramon Lugil in Barcelona, Spain. And uh, he'd been working as an acoustical consultant and engineer since then. Uh, in 2009, he came to WSG Highland office as an intern, and from that point, that journey continues up till today, where he represents WSG 
worldwide, in particular in Spain, Africa, and the Middle East. Mark, you can wave for, for the people. See you. And we end with Mateos, Mateo de los Rios uh, from Cali, Colombia. Okay. And uh, Mateo holds a bachelor degrees in music and electronic production and design from Berkeley College of Music uh, in 2001 and um, an MBA uh, at Los Andes University in Colombia. And since 2016, he has been in charge of the creation and implementation of the new music and sound production program or major at Isesi University, where he's now at uh, the recently open recording studio. Mateo, you can wave for the gang. Okay. Mm -hmm. So after giving the proper introduction, let's go for fun. Okay. I will start sharing my screen and we will start. As, uh, as John mentioned, we are going to be talking about the challenges of building world-class audio production facilities in emerging global communities, basically internationally. Uh, and we have a very prestigious panel that will, that will share uh, the knowledge and experience today. So again, as we always say, what is the challenge? The challenge is the same, to unite the disciplines of architecture, acoustics and technology into one amazing space that will work per the program that we are thinking of. And, and uh, sometimes to make that challenge possible, okay, we have to deal with different conditions, site conditions. And we, those, that's what we are gonna be exploring today. And what is important is that no matter the location, every studio that we are designing and we are participating in its creation, in its stream and implementation, it's a custom made studio. Every studio is unique. There's nothing like a copy paste from one to the other. Why? Because the users are different, the conditions are different, the businesses are different, regions, etc. cetera. And, uh, and this is why we, although the title is so long, okay, we have to deal with construction, building, that means architecture. We are trying to achieve world class, that means world-class facility that means that we need to uh, attach to certain standards in terms of functionality acoustics and technology and the fact that it's in an emerging global community it adds the complexity of the environment and no matter what type of studio you're working on how crazy the studio is how diverse the location region etc cetera, etc cetera, in any single case there is a program there is a use, there is a user, and there's a need to fulfill. No matter if it's the own use of the music production, product producer, or if it's the client that will work in that studio, that commercial studio, uh, or just to have mm -hmm. fun with the family at a house. So in different regions, okay, the goals are always the same, to achieve and to, and to conquer that challenge Okay, to make an amazing space, to have a, a moment, an experience that will change that artistic momentum into a song, because music, it's all about music when it comes to recording studio design, and, a, and getting all those flavors okay, from its regions applied into the project. And I think that's, that's the beauty of it. Okay? And that's worldwide. Okay, that has nothing to do with the emerging country. That's completely global and international. You know, Serge, I'm, I'm, I want to interrupt for a moment and I want to challenge our panelists because I know we're getting ready for, for them to challenge. But when you, uh, and we've talked about this num a number of times, um, you brought up the word standards. Um, it's a big world. We, we me particularly, are, are very used to US standards. So I would love for our panelists to talk about international standards and do they differ? Are they the same? Are they a little bit more universal in the audio world um, than, than others? For instance, Europe, in Europe, we use ITU standards. In the US, we use ASTM standards. So that's an interesting issue. Metric versus English, always an interesting challenge, okay? Um, even language, okay? How, how have we dealt with that issue? So. As we move forward, Serge, you can tackle those, those ideas, but I challenge uh, our panelists to, to maybe 
flirt with some of those notions as well. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, very good. You're going to be very happy to see that our panelists are very prepared for that because basically all what you just mentioned are the challenges that they deal during those mm -hmm. processes. So just to wrap up this introduction, last four, five minutes, okay, we need uh, the, the most important thing, and this is, this is again equalized in every single project worldwide, is to discover what is going on, what is the program which are the requirements of the space, which are the acoustic isolation, the simultaneous use of the different spaces, which are the acoustic quality needs, standards, okay, in terms of performance, okay, and then the complexity of electrical systems, air conditioning systems, that in every country, although the machines are more or less the same, each country has its own favor, its own codes to, to make uh, things, and how we will manage this complex array of uh, audio video network wiring and in the end as we just mentioned the vibe that is that uniqueness that will make the space uh, one of a kind okay um, and will make clients to choose that facility uh, other than others okay so again acoustic architecture acoustics and technology to start le let's set up our acoustic isolation and science level needs okay uh, then determine the internal room acoustics, okay, how the, the, the different treatment that will allow our space to sound uh, magic, okay. Let's talk about the technology, let's bring uh, uh, all the technology needs, equipment lists, etc., that will come into the equation, because that will determine the type and sizes of the rooms. And of course, all the other consultants that will be required to make that journey mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, lighting designer, structural designers, interior designers, all of these components are going to be critical during the journey in order to be able to create details, drawings, information, specifications that will allow, <laughs> that will allow us to avoid these kind of mistakes. That's a little joke, uh, but uh, this happens to us before. And uh, but in the end, we need an infrastructure that will support the uh, world-class operation that we want to have, okay? And that infrastructure, no matter in, we, in what country you are, will look more or less the same. Will look like machine rooms, uh, electrical closets, electrical rooms, and all this information is, the, is critical for the functionality of our uh, space. We used to have the experience of the one-man show. In the old days, we arrived to a location worldwide and we find that one person is doing the design, building, manufacturing, engineering, everything all in one person. And during the years, all the, on a worldwide level, we've been in the process of a more sophisticated division of tasks, okay? Up to the point where today, a typical process of designing a world-class facility will have different roles and different phases, okay? As complex as, as the one you have now on the screen to define, that means schematic design uh, of the space, go to the design development, that means starting to dream about what's going on inside, create all the technical engineering, then to uh, arrive into the final construction drawings and everything is done go to the construction supervision that is also a critical part of it and we are going to be talking about that also. Um, as a final note, something that we learned during these 50 years of experience, there is a planning design timeline and a construction timeline that is absolutely 100% valid if you want to have a successful process, okay? We have to take care about the structural acoustics both a structural vibration and noise isolation first on the design and construction point of view. Once we have our container as isolated as we need it for the project, then we can move into the studies and implementation of the acoustic quality. That means the internal room acoustic, the, re the control of reverberation or other acoustic signatures of the room. And once we have all our architectural acoustical container in place with all the needs, then we can focus on equipment, technology, and, uh, and uh, the implementation of the use of the space on a technical level. So 
that was a, a brief introduction, okay, of the, that set up the, the tone for our panel today. Uh, we are going to start with the, with a video of Fama Studios in Re Dominican Republic uh, that will give us a flavor of one studio in one little, tiny little mm -hmm. island in the Caribbean that is the Dominican Republic. Uh, that is, I think that is a very interesting case study. And then we will start with our panelists. So let me go to that. Hola, bienvenidos a Fama. Estamos en el corazón de la ciudad colonial en la República Dominicana. Acompáñame a este tour. Iniciamos en la sala A, equipada con una Rupert Neve 5088 de 32 canales, monitores fijos Adam S5B, NS10 Yamaha y Aura Tones, con una amplia serie de compresores, ecualizadores, saturadores y procesadores de audio como el Bricasti, el Eventide H8000, entre otros. Una de las cualidades del diseño de este control room es la incorporación de una visual directa hacia el Live Room y el ISO Booth para facilitar la comunicación durante la grabación. Fama cuenta con una versatilidad que permite interconexión entre las distintas salas de grabación y cabinas de control, permitiendo al ingeniero de sonido o productor utilizar todas las salas de grabación sin importar en cuál cabina de control se encuentre. La sala B. Cuenta con una Solid State Logic Duality de 48 canales, monitores focales Twin 6B, NS10 Yamaha, Auratons y Adams A7X. También cuenta con una serie de procesadores como el Eventide H9000R y el Lexicon 480L, entre otros. En el estudio también se realizan trabajos de mezcla 5.1 y postproducción para audiovisuales y se han llevado a cabo varios Writers Camp. La sala B también cuenta con un Live Room y un ISO Booth compartidos con el Estudio C. El Estudio C es la única sala con el interfase de Apollo y cuenta con el controlador Avid S3 y monitores Auraton y Neumann. Una nota importante es que el diseño de los estudios B y C es ideal para el trabajo simultáneo de postproducción, de sound design y composición. GMR es una habitación donde el artista puede seleccionar probar distintos instrumentos, batería, bajo, teclados, guitarras, pedales, amplificadores y plantas antes de pasar a la sala de grabación. El edificio tiene varios niveles, dos de estudios de grabación, cada uno con sus respectivas áreas sociales, lounge, comedor, cocina, piscina, jacuzzi. Contamos con un chef que puede ofrecer servicios culinarios, desayuno, almuerzo y cena. Dentro de otros servicios disponemos de clases de yoga, clases de boxeo, mesa de ping pong, bicicletas, así como un gimnasio. Ok, so... Ok, I think it's a fantastic location. I, I was completely surprised about that room where you can check all the gear that they have, all the instruments that they have. I think that is, was a fantastic idea. Uh, so again, each place ha will have its flavor, okay? Mm -hmm. Although the standards, the acoustical standards of isolation, NC levels, uh, frequency response yeah. are achieved, it's, uh, it has its own Hey, Serge, um, I know Luis uh, could not be with us. Um, Yes. was planning on it, but at the last minute he had a family emergency. So we're really lucky that we had that video. Um, could you describe, why don't you take us through some of the challenges there? I mean, building stuff in the Caribbean, even though it's close to Miami and seems like it's close to the United States, it's, it's not that friendly. It's, it's a tough environment. Uh, give, us the, give us the three top challenges on that one. Okay. So first of all, if you're building a studio in an island, just make absolutely <laughs> sure to have everything you need when you're installing it. Because it's an island, that means that certain things will not be available in the closest home depot, let's call it that way. Uh, so you need to have, when you fly your crew, for example, for the final installation, the crew needs to have every single screw, tool, everything, okay, for installation. Also, one of the challenge was power, okay? Uh, dealing with the local uh, uncertainties of power, that means creating 
a redundancy power system, backup generator, UPS, location of the generators, you know, all those things were critical in, in this particular location. On the bright side, on the bright side, local uh, hand, uh, handcraftship, okay? The ability of the locals to create anything you want in wood, because they have very good wood, very solid, very strong, uh, lovely quality, and they have the labor, okay? So that was uh, uh, one of the bright sides. So a little of it, I, I think. But no choice about to have everything that is required during construction and uh, I think we had some power challenges on that one. Oh yeah, the, the, the electrical the electrical is is a big one. Okay, absolutely. Um, so I I think guys, if you agree that we can give the torch to Mr. Mills in Beijing and he can he can share with us uh, the experience that we have together. Uh, we, I was lucky enough to be part of that journey with Mills when uh, we designed together and created 55 Tech. Uh, that is an amazing studio in the heart of Beijing. So Mills, you, you can take control of the screen uh, and it's your, your portion of it. Okay. Welcome Hi, everyone. everyone. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> good morning for us, but good evening for you. <laughs> Hi, good evening, Mills, again. Hi, everyone. Okay, so uh, my name is Mills, and uh, I am from 55 Tech Recording Studios in Beijing, China. And uh, I should say it's a <laughs> great honor to have uh, such opportunity to present here and talk about my experience on the challenges of building professional recording studios in China. So, uh, the whole story can be described as two topics. And uh, the first one is always be the people. So if you want to do anything, people or a team will always be the top thing to talk about. And then for professional service facilities, location is one of the uh, most important things to consider from uh, the very early stage. And uh, when you conduct the international cooperation, the language barriers are quite challenged, obviously. And especially we come from the Far East and uh, we naturally speak Chinese. <laughs> then the studios, the system design reflect your taste of the sound as, as well as the technical capabilities of the team. Hence you need to uh, make sure it goes in the right direction and goes well. And uh, then the strengths of design company should not be underestimated and uh, which is a very important part of the whole process. So above all, you know, our story is only just the beginning. So let's start. So here you can see, uh, here's our team. Uh, I should say it, uh, enthusiastic, ambitious, and uh, more importantly, capable. So we are so proud to came to the cover page of the Mix magazine last year, and uh, which I need to especially uh, thank WSDG who helped us uh, to make that happen. Thank you very much. And uh, let's talk about the location. So I'm saying location, location, and uh, location. So <laughs> I should say, especially in the big city, Location is uh, extremely important for any professional services facilities. We all know this, but uh, we all understand that will dramatically in, uh, increase your cost from the top. But uh, believe me, it, it will worth it no matter what. So 55 Tech Recording Studios is, is centrally located in the heart of Beijing. So the most crowded place named the Central Business District. And uh, I should say our excellent location has made a huge difference among 3,000 more competitors in the city. Yes, we have over 3,000 recording studios in Beijing alone. So whenever the studio, yeah, whenever the studio idea come to your mind, the first and foremost the thing is where, where you are going to locate your studio. That's, that's, a, that's a huge number of studios. Is, are these... Are there really 3,000 studios at the caliber of 55 Tech? <laughs> 3,000 studios, uh, you know, including the home one and right. including the government-based recording studio, including okay. the universities. Right. So, so there are a lot. Yeah. Wow. 
That's yeah, so. but uh, actually, as the professional services or professional commercial one and uh, 55 Tech are, you know, facing those competitions in the market. Yep. Okay, let's talk about the necessary conditions of an international cooperation. So English language is still a major issue for music and uh, technical people of China. So when you plan to hire a global famous design firm like uh, WSDG to help you design your studio in China, the effective communication shall be the challenge from all aspects. So more than that, a thorough understanding of, of the music production, related gear technologies are another must thing that your team need to have. So I'd like to say that when, I, when the design done, you have the papers and uh, you have to conduct the translation by all by yourself because obviously you need to make sure the builder really understand it all and only that can they uh, can they proceed the construction by the right workflows and requirements so uh, to me i believe that's one of the hardest things that i have ever done for all my life so far yes you do my friend yeah so the selection of the uh, Hall of Fame systems. So let's talk about the uh, electrical acoustics system designs. So as a recording studio, the, the mixing console is the foremost thing you need to consider. And uh, we chose API eventually, and because of not only the sound, but also the modern way of working to fit in the music production nowadays. And uh, more importantly, they are really robust. And even though they provide extra five years warranty so that you don't, you know, you don't have to uh, worry about uh, your daily working. And from there, you must seek help for, from the uh, professional, from the uh, professional system integrator or a pro audio gear distributor who can help you commission the whole system integration. And uh, I think that's the thing seem to be very easily uh, neglected so that you have to investigate your local market, who is the right partner of your system first. So you see here is the uh, recording studio and uh, we have the uh, NAMTAC award nominee and uh, this is the, uh, the major look of my studio and I'm here so I can take everybody to see it first. <laughs> so this is the uh, rough sea. So you can see the live room and uh, also the control room by different direction and also the uh, control room B. So for 55 TAC, we are a uh, vintage microphone collector and from 1945, 44BX to uh, 1954's Telefunken U47. And also uh, from 1974's AKG414 come and many others. It takes years to collect those Hall of Fame mics from the world. From the world, and I believe uh, most of the serious studio owners have the similar hobbies like us. And and uh, and Mills, uh, the clientele of 55 Tech uh, understands the 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 value, the historical audio yeah, and question, quality yeah. value of that collection. They, they, do, uh, they do understand that that's a, a differential between 50, 55 Tech and other studios in China or around the world? Yes. Before we really took actions on building the uh, 55 Tech, we, we did serious investigation all, uh, all around the world, including all the famous recording studios in the United States, in the uh, Great Britain, in, you know, other, in, in Japan. So uh, we really learned a lot from their, not only the, uh, uh, the equipment list, but, uh, but also their style and their vibe. So that we want to uh, create, we want to create a studio that uh, can be world-class. So no matter what, when the world famous masters come into China and we will have this, you know, familiar space to, 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 to provide the services for them. So, okay. Do you, do, you, so, do you charge extra for the vintage equipment or it's included in your studio? Uh, it's uh, included in our studio so far. And uh, we did talk about to charge extra 
uh, extra uh, cost, but uh, so far we still considering to yeah. uh, let more people to try and to let them really understand uh, those Hall of Fame gears. And Mills, what about an interesting question, and actually everybody could talk to this, what about maintaining some of this vintage, older, particularly analog equipment? Is it, is it easy to do that in China? Um, difficult? Easy? What do you think? Uh, um, I think right now, especially in China, uh, most of the, uh, the brand distributors have the capabilities to do that. Okay. And uh, we also have some very dedicated technical guys in the market. So like uh, this guy who is, you know, dedicated focus on vintage mics and that guy is focusing on the console and that guy focusing on the compressor, yeah. something like that. So we are uh, pretty easy or pretty approachable to those people so that uh, we normally will have our services conducted by every quarter. So those guys will come in and uh, they will check everything and uh, we'll make sure our gears are in position. Yeah, so the, an entire an entire growth of an industry and all the related uh, providers consultants uh, it's it's something that is growing you you think that in china today that industry is growing all the people that are supporting the recording industry uh, are are growing correct uh yes i can say that but uh still you know uh our studio construction or building style are still far behind of the world standards right now. And uh, we are, you know, uh, as 55 Tech, we are the frontier. So we are showing people what a, a studio should be built, should be designed by WSDG and uh, what kind of gears should a world-class studio have. So this is what we want to show to the market, show to the industry here and uh, to let people really understand how important that the uh, acoustic uh, design, architectural acoustic design should be done from the very first place. And also the system design as well as the system integration should be done by the uh, right workflow and by the world-class standards. So this is all important uh, that uh, for the past many years, we don't see a a world-class recording studio showed up in China. And uh, so that's, that's why we have our ambitious and uh, has our you know, capability to achieve those uh, with the help of WSDG, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so let's continue to talk about the system. And uh, we must also mention the system integration as well. And as said, in China, the gear distributors takes the role of helping you fulfill your electroacoustic system so that it will be a better way that uh, if you work with them from the very beginning. And uh, from the gear spec, as well as the uh, configurations that you need to make sure every important node conforms uh, to your designs. Sometimes you, you uh, even need to double check with them or even with the design firms before you take any actions. So the gears, you see we have pretty many vintage gears from Poltac to LA2A. And uh, you can see a knob behind me is one of the knob from the LA2A. So it's a very interesting photo and uh, we eventually decided to hang up on the wall. So, yeah. you know, and it's that, pointing that, out to the number 55 as a note. Yes, that's <laughs> right. And uh, that one became uh, our recording studio icon lately. So uh, we have many vintage gears that uh, shows our tastes of the sound. But still, those gears, you know, uh, with ages, you really need the services, you know, like what I talked with John a little bit earlier. You know, the, the, the services need to be done from time to time to, you know, make sure the way of those gears should be, and hence you gotta have a guy or a professional gear distributor, like what I said, uh, who can really help you with this part, and that will make your daily work in peace and uh, ensure your success with, with uh, no doubt. Mills, do you find that you're working on um, both China electric standards as well as American? Are you having to introduce both of them into the system? Uh, you mean the both system standards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, 
uh, to be honest, China is still a, a developing country yeah. uh, from all aspects. So right. including technology, including the standards or even the workflows. So normally United States are, you know, far ahead of China in many, in many, uh -huh. in many ways. So this is why the younger generation like us used to learn from the website, from the, you know, like uh, MTV videos uh, of what a recording studio should be. And then we accumulated our interest to some, stand, uh, to some points. And then we're starting to seriously digging from the internet. But mostly we learn from, you know, Capital Records or, in, you know, from you know, Abbey Road maybe. But uh, uh, I mean, I mean the, 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 the trend in the market here are still uh, trying to learn from the from the recording studios of right. the United States first, okay. especially the Los Angeles. Yeah, let's talk about the sufficient uh, professional partners. Okay, now you have all your preparation of the recording studios, location, electro, uh, acoustic systems, and then let's move on to talk about the acoust uh, architectural acoustic design. So literally, we chose WSDG out of nine design firms around the world, and uh, WSDG provides as with countless hours guidance, both in terms of workflow and approach. To be honest, we didn't have much, you know, uh, education from the market here in China before. So that's why, uh, that's the real advanced uh, architectural acoustic construction standards, which WSDG really, really helped us quite a lot over this and taught us to understand how a recording studio should be designed and built. So our facility uh, is another great success to prove that WSDG's taste and style as well as the result. Yeah. So I am attaching some design schemes of uh, 55 tech recording studios. And uh, we have two, con uh, two control rooms and two live rooms, uh, one big and one smaller. The overall space is, is around uh, like 768 square meters big. Although, you know, like a small sparrow, but uh, it's fully equipped. So from, let's, so you can see from the drawing to the, re, uh, to the reality, yeah. So another drawing to the reality, yep. So in China, one of the most challenging thing is the critical, you know, acoustic materials sourcing especially the acoustic fabrics. As we, we all know, China's first-tier uh, first cities appears, you know, appears to be extremely materially rich, but the qualified and compliant uh, acoustic materials are still uh, in scars. So we searched quite some time of the qualified fabrics that WSDG recommended by, by the design, but actually, or eventually, we couldn't make it. And from there, uh, WSDG helped us to source the right fabrics, but uh, the high importation tariffs became really, really a difficulty among the entire building process. And uh, that's also an unplanned raise of the cost to the overall project. On the other hand, uh, to make sure what we are going to use take place, uh, uh, what, what we are going to use to, to, to replace the samples that from WSDG, we ship the back and forth with our local replacement materials, like the wood boards, glue, or even metal boards, samples. And uh, that took us really long time, but we think that's the right thing to do to ensure the greater success later. So those steps must not be taken for granted. And uh, otherwise, the problems can be easily raised and affected to the overall ambient acoustic results. <coughs> Mills, did all the drawings have to be translated? Yes, I translated uh, every single English word to Chinese to make sure my builder and uh, my partners really understand them. So that's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, and during and during some side pieces during construction, he also had the renderings, you know, uh -huh. the 3D images on the wall. So everybody on board was in the same yeah. goal, you know. We are building this. Yep. Okay. So those are the fabric samples yep. and uh, woodboard samples from WSDG, which is really helpful because we don't, uh, because we didn't build 
uh, a professional recording studio before. So we need to understand clearly what we are going to need. So uh, let's talk about uh, after the design. So when you have the design, you have, uh, you have the right materials and then you must select a reliable builder to help you put, your, uh, put all of your stuff together. So in China, most of the uh, construction builders have been doing recording studio in the wrong way for many, many years. And not only from the standards, but, but also from the processes. So from what we've learned through the design drawing translation, we have to talk, we have, we have to uh, talk it through with our builder time and time again, until they really understand uh, what the design want as well as how it can be done. So I have to say, this is quite a lot of communications among WSDG, uh, 55 tech partners and the builders. So we built our way of working with WSDG gradu uh, gradually is that we reported uh, our processes with photos and videos of each and every important uh, construction notes. So that Sergio and Joshua who can you know, double confirm with us before we move to the next steps. That's a lot of, uh, you know, that took quite some of your time, but it will make sure you don't make big mistakes. So well, I that's think you, one, another lesson when you're, when we're dealing with, with projects that are in uh, very different time zones, be prepared for early morning or late night meetings. Yes, that's indeed. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's for that's sure. That's for sure. Yeah. So, and, and virtual side visits. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's, I should say that's a great experience here, especially in China. So I need to, you know, tell uh, the audience and don't get lazy stare at the processes it's important so thank you i have a, yeah i have attached some keynotes of our building uh so everyone can see and understand how we achieved this step uh, step by step till the very last of the uh the building process we moved uh all of our gears in and uh, that took most of the space of our big live room yeah so that's the only beginning of the story and uh, after quite some time, normally six or seven months of building, time has, has passed, but your journey is only started. So that's a little bit terrified, but uh, sadly it is true. So actually the system integration, you need to pay more attention to every connector's soldering and uh, tune the lights to ensure your ambient uh, in environment comfortable enough and move, uh, move the console in, set it up, so you can see, move the console in, set it up, and light it up. And uh, it seems that your job is done, but uh, it's far from it. So uh, I, especially, I want to talk about the, you know, the key section, uh, the final sound tuning. So I believe with the uh, the whole process, the final sound tuning is the extremely important part. And uh, quite some people get carried away by existing temporary wins and uh, neglected to review the post-construction measurement at all. So meanwhile, rigorous room acoustical tuning is essential and must be done by all means. That's so, so important to make sure you, uh, what you have done or what you have paid be worth. So WSDG came, came to us and uh, conducted on-site room sound tuning, carefully, uh, uh, carefully helped us uh, almost each and every frequency point. And uh, to be addressed is that every studio owner has their own different taste in sound. So, so that your taste, your taste of sound should be reflected into your, your studio with this process. So we tested uh, multiple results and uh, kept communicating with WSDG's tuning engineer until we got what we want from the beginning of our story. And I should say that was a fantastic journey. Okay, that's that's great, Mills. Thank you very, very much uh, for sharing your your experience with us. We have to move forward in the in the panel. Sure. Uh, okay. you can, if you can stop sharing your screen, I will appreciate it. And I will allow now Mateo, Mateo de los Rios from ICC University. Okay, that's good. nice pictures. Okay, thank you very much for 
So yeah. the studio in action, basically, with the musicians. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. Thank you, AES. Thank you, WSDG, and thank you for your time. Okay, I appreciate Mills. Thank you. So, Matteo, uh, Matteo, now uh, we have one part of the story. Again, thanks, Mills, for sharing your experience with our community. And, uh, and Matteo, now the floor is yours. And uh, Matteo, again, director of the music program of ISS University in Cali, Colombia, that will share with us the entire experience of building a floor story building full of studios, rehearsal rooms, ensemble rooms. So, Mateo, the floor is yours. You can share your screen and have fun. Hi, everyone. Well, it's an honor also to be here and share my experience. It's been a fantastic adventure, and for us, it's been a dream to be able to to be here and share this experience, to actually have it be, be a reality. So let's start first with a short video that shows everything we've done. And here we go.
Wow, Mateo, what a place, what <laughs> a place. place, what a place to, to basically study engineering, music. Just think how easy it would be. Yes. You just have the drawings and then a year later, the video happens. But that's not exactly what happened. Uh, no. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> So Not let's just start off with exactly how long did that take? Let's just get that out of the way, Serge, or, or Matteo. How long did, was the process? I think Sergio remembers better how, how long it has taken. It, it was, uh, it was a six-month uh, design process wow. when it comes to the architectural civil design and uh, architectural acoustics and systems engineering. And then it was... a uh, almost one and a half years, even a little yeah. more for, for build it. Yeah. So it was a long process. We imagine we started with hair. <laughs> exactly. I used to have a long, you know, <laughs> hardcore hair, <laughs> some head banging. And now those days are over. Um, yeah. yeah, well, I have to say it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm extremely fortunate. I mean, I, I, I was, I arrived to Cali in the moment, I guess, where, where this had to happen. And I, I met the university and their their dream of making a music um, program, a music major, the first music major in Isesi University, which is a young university, a young private university. So, um, so I basically sat down and and had the opportunity to create everything from scratch and trying to include every. Thing I had learned, I had seen at Berkeley, I had seen in past experience visiting other schools in my past experience in Bogota, founding another music school and trying to, to, uh, to get to know the, the world of music education and production and sound uh, education. So uh, everything ended up coinciding here and, and bringing us the opportunity to, to build this, this amazing complex that that it really stands out in, in Colombia we've been fortunate that the university really believed in the program and and went all in I mean this is this was like an all-in investment and, and, and by and by the way your dream collide with the dream of the dean because the dean was one of the biggest promoters you know you you have the dean then you have the board you know <laughs> the board exactly. you have to convince a lot of people to get this kind of funding yeah. for this project and uh, but the dean was a huge promoter and, and support no Serge, we uh, haven't even talked about the money but I, maybe that's another another subject <laughs> It's a big issue. It's a big issue, yeah. It's a big issue because it's, it's a square feet or a square meter of a highly world-class developed acoustic construction, it costs quite a lot of money, okay? And no matter what country you are, you're talking about five-star hospitality construction cost. You know, it's, it's that kind of money. Uh, and... Uh, so you will be able to save in certain things like maybe labor, but other things will cost more. So it's a, it's a kind of balance between things. Uh, Matteo, you want to show us some pictures? Uh, yeah. Of course, the, the video just told us a lot of the story, but maybe you want to go to, to any particular? Yeah, uh, sure. I'm going to show you a little presentation I have prepared, which is just a bunch of pictures as I, as I talk we got around it. this. We got it. Uh, so, okay, so this is the building. We really started from scratch. I remember having Sergio visit the first day when I was doing the inaugural concert for just establishing that this was gonna be done, but it was just an idea. We had it, just- uh, It was an empty lot, an yeah. empty lot, uh, an, an empty, an empty lot. Pa parking space, yeah. Yeah, the motorcycle uh, parking space. Uh, so, and we saw a bunch of buildings and a bunch of things and as we started all the process that Mills already described as, you know, what are the needs? What, 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 are we, what do we want to do? This is, this is it, it, it differs from a commercial studio because here we're building every space needed to house a music program with a music production and sound emphasis. So we needed practice rooms, uh, individual practice rooms, group practice rooms, ensemble rooms, in the Media Lab, which is a, a, a big workstation with individual production workstations, we needed, we ended up with three recording studios, 16 ensemble rooms, well, a bunch of spaces so that everything could work. And how would this 
communicate with, with each other so that it could really serve and, 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 and bring up everything we wanted to do in, in the educational side, say in the academic side. And not only there, because we knew that if, the, if we built this, the community, the musical community in Cali and in Colombia would notice and would, and would be interested. So one of the things that I really wanted to do was to, to, to convince the university that we needed a world-class a facility because that would enable excellent education and for our students to have a really like the, an advantage on the market label because they are going to be exposed to top level equipment activities processes um all types of dynamics that go on in 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 this world and um it would also attract artists who want to come here and work or teach or you know, share their experiences with us. And if we have a world-class facility with world-class technology, they're gonna be happy to come and, and share and even work here. So, so we were, that was a, those two objectives were clear since we started. Um, and, and, by the, and by the way, Cali is not, is not the capital of the city. It's like the, it's the third city in terms of size. It is, it is. Yeah, Bogota is the capital. Yes. Medellin comes second and Cali by a little bit comes third. It's about a two million. Has it, always been, uh, okay. has it always been your thinking that these facilities, which are extraordinary anywhere, will also be used for commercial purposes? Well, we, one of the things I really made an emphasis on when we were talking is that I didn't want the commercial side to take over the educational side. Right. So we were really firm on saying that our, our main objective is education. But if we do really well and we, were, we are going to have some time available, we can invite or, or accommodate clients that want to work here. And if things show us some show us some pictures and if uh, things really Mateo, if, start, start, start showing us yeah, the pictures. magic. Yes. So I basically what I said before, I had seen the magic. I had visited Berkeley. I was there when the 160 building was um, was being built and I could see the process because I was invited as a Berkeley alumni. Um, I had been in Bogota seeing other projects that WSDG had done there. And that was very important because that meant that WSDG knew Colombia and had worked here. So that was extremely important for when I went to the board and to the dean to convince them. So these are the spaces we sort of like inspired on, the, the 160 to uh, Berkeley Studios, a control room. So in this project, we had, to have, we had to start from scratch. Nothing had been done like this. Nothing had been uh, attempted. There's no other example we, could, we can compare to there, there was everything was new. Everything was a, a new yeah. adventure. So the fun part is that the 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 building architectural uh, drawings were done. So we have to uh, talk with the architect to to remove some floors exactly. in order to have that double height spaces. You know that that was also an interest interesting experience. You know to go to the architect and the structural engineers and, and you know, start removing slabs that is not that easy. Exactly, on... so here you can see the, the, the two story spaces on the, on the live room and on a different studio we made. So yeah, it started from there. And that meant that we had to start educating everyone down here. Yeah. That for me was one of the main things that had to be done really well because, because we didn't, people either didn't have experience, hadn't seen spaces like this, or have never been exposed to, to, what, uh, to the world of music and music production, especially on, on, a, you know, on a top yeah. quality level. So I knew that that was gonna be, we had to confront a little resistance from people who maybe think, you know, you're dreaming too much, that we're in Colombia, you should you know, take it down a notch. And, I, and, and my whole philosophy was, no, on the contrary, we are not going to take it down a notch. We're going to take it up a notch because why, why do we have to take it down a notch if we're as able and in the music side, we're part of the world industry. So uh, on the contrary, we had to really uh, try to achieve a, a great uh, product. So 
That meant having, as Mill said, endless reunions with all the teams starting from the academic and the university and everybody that makes things happen in the university because I had to work in an institution that has a lot of different offices and ways of moving different to a single yeah. project that, that a single person can, can lead and control. You have more pictures there, Mateo, yep. for us? Yep. So these pictures just show the complexity that I, I had to, me and Sergio had to educate everyone here, the university and the contractors and everyone who was going to work with and show them why is this done? Because this is not just because we we like to because this has a need this will ensure quality this will make that things will work at the end really well another thing that was really special was that um we had to teach them the way these spaces are constructed and this i learned from sergio i'm not an expert <laughs> i mean uh, whatever i learned but i really learned when i was doing this process with sergio and and telling the people that when you construct these spaces, you're basically doing a, a box in a box and then you're constructing from the outside in. So there's not gonna be opportunities as, as, as you close spaces and layers, you can't go back and, 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 and correct mistakes. So really being really careful of details and understanding why those details are there and why the, D the WSDG plans had a ton of layers for each space uh, was a very big effort. But fortunately, I, 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 I remember, I remember the, one of the first meetings with the entire team that was basically in a classroom, in one of the classrooms of the university. I <laughs> asked the team members if they ever been in a professional recording studio in their life before, no matter where, if they've been there. And 95% of the people say we've never been in a recording studio. So basically that was one of the challenges for exactly. the entire team from architect to structural engineers, uh, management uh, at the university, maintenance, electrical, mechanical, everybody trying to get the sense of what is the goal of the design. Exactly. So that, that started with a lot of presentations, a lot of, p of, of pictures, but we definitely decided to go and visit Berkeley as an example of what we were trying to achieve and also to try and ask as many questions and learn as much as we could so that we could uh, bring this uh, knowledge to, to our project and try to, to... But you know, this brings up a very interesting conversation which is common to all studios, particularly high, I wouldn't say high profile studios, but complex studio construction. And by that, I mean mostly studios with, with quite a bit of isolation, which is where the complicated part is. Um, in, in the United States and in, and in sophisticated markets, England, for instance, uh, parts of Europe, um, certain cities in Canada, there are, there's a sort of universe of studio builders uh, that parallels the studio design community. It's relatively sophisticated, certainly in the last 10 or 15 years, it's grown quite a bit. But it should be noted that every studio builder on his first project was a non-studio builder. <laughs> okay. and it's, Absolutely. Okay. And, and client education is a huge issue that we still face uh, e even today. And I imagine that it's infinitely more complicated when you get into an environment like the one you are in. I appreciate that you spent so much time on the education, on your self-education, so you could go back and become more or less our eyes and ears. But Serge, we also put a lot of supervision on the site, didn't we? Yes, in this particular project where, by the way, the construction company that was hired after a bidding, a private bidding, was a company that was supposed to be expert in this field. That was a re-education of them because they thought that they got all the right knowledge, but then when they jump into the heavy duty construction, they find out that there are things that they need to relearn, which it was done. Yeah. So, uh, so again, I think that uh, after this masters in acoustic construction, this construction company now they are in a, in, a, in the different level, in a completely different level, they're ready for the next experience. Um, again, but even even on the administration point of view, on the manage on the internal university management point of view, it was a huge learning curve that we were blessed to be part of it. 
Yeah, basically our decision on the on the con on the construction contractor, which was the most important yeah. part, was based on basically nobody had experience, so we couldn't. That wasn't so much of a criteria, or they had a little experience, but not on complex studio recording studios, more on spaces like uh, convention rooms and hotels and stuff like that. But um, what we really went into is, are they going to be able to withstand the pressure of a whole building? Because we're not doing one recording studio or three rooms. We did, I mean, Sergio can correct me, but it's like 16 ensemble rooms, uh, 16 individual rooms, it's, six ensemble rooms, three recording studios. 30, 32 individual spaces when, it, when you add Imagine. control rooms, ISO booths, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. So it's, so it's a it's 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 a huge project, and not a lot of companies or contractors could could take that, and they would probably yes. say yes because they want to do it. But then, One, yes, once we once we find out the reality of the of the skills of the different team members, we propose the university to have one uh, WSG team member uh, on site twenty four seven. Okay, that was a moment that was a critical moment of the process. And uh, the university finding out the amount of money that they have on the table to be invested, they think that, that, that it was a good idea to be 100% safe having a, a WCT team member on site 24 7. And this is what we did. Please. And I assume, Serge, I mean, this entire project was navigated in Spanish, correct? The entire project was navigated in Spanish. Okay. Yes. Uh, there, there is a common English language when it comes to technology. So the systems integration language is in English, okay? Uh, but uh, architectural, acoustics, detailing, everything, drawings, everything was, in, uh, was done in Spanish and, and produced as per Colombian code. That means that when you're thinking about distances, clearances, ADA, uh, electrical, etc., all that was do you, done do as you, per Colombian is that, codes. Is that horribly uh, or or uh, very different from U.S. codes? Uh, in terms of electrical, absolutely. In terms of ADA, a hundred percent different. Very different. Really, very oh, yeah. different. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mateo, anything else that you want to show us before we move to to Mark? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that um, basically the difficulties were, that we encountered was. Um, the lack of experience, the lack of contractors who had done this work. So there was a lot of uh, correction that had to be done and some things had to be uh, br brought down and done again. So, I mean, that's why the process sort of uh, extended more than we originally planned, but I, I knew that was gonna happen. I mean, this was the first time we were doing, everyone was learning to do it except WSDG. So uh, this was part of the process. Um, yeah, uh, another. Uh, Yes, Another okay. hard part or that we had to deal with is that we had to import everything. I mean, we just knew that we, do, we weren't going to find anything here except maybe, I mean, the basic stuff like wood. But the, the, the fabrics that cover all the, all the different uh, structural elements had to be imported. The 47 doors had to be imported. E every piece of equipment had to be imported, everything. So that made it hard, but it also ensured me that, that we were buying the right stuff because we were buying it in the US and we, were, and we had WSDG uh, confirming and helping us with choosing and, uh, and doing this process of buying and yeah. bringing it down to Colombia. So, so that was one of the uh, special things of, of, of this project. And, but fortunately, everything came out fine. And then uh, this is just part of the, of the building process. I'm showing how everything was done, all the doors. Um, as part of the process, I trusted WSDG with every different step because I knew they do excellent work. So as Mills also said, the tuning way was a very important part. And here we can see Renato and David down here in Cali uh, doing the final tuning for one of the, well, for the three recording studios we have. And here they're working on one of the monitors for the, for the A studio. And basically, well, the benefits are one of the things that they already mentioned, no labor costs and construction costs are lower. So that played for us uh, in our advantage. 
And we also found out that there were some contractors who were really good at their game, especially for us, like the network and electrical contractor did their work really well. So you can see like beautiful CMR rooms with really organized um, trays and just everything really well done. So that was a, a great surprise. Um, it was also a great experience because, because people hadn't done it before. There was no resistance. They didn't know any other example or they weren't saying like, this is not done this way. I, I, I've seen it done another way by somebody else or we, that, that didn't come into play. And everybody was eager to learn. And they were really, uh, they were really uh, honored and, 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 and this project inspired a sense of pride in everyone here in the school that had and the constructors that, that worked in the project. So, so that really gave momentum to the project and has, has I think has given it a special vibe of, 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 of uh, a yeah. sense of, of achieving a great, a, a great. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we make friends, by the way. We made, uh, I think, lifetime friends uh, during the process. Uh, Mateo, thank you very, very much for sharing it. This is, uh, I think that what I can learn so far from what Mills mentioned and Mateo mentioned, no matter if WCG, I, I would like to take out the WCG from the equation. You need someone that understands the program from, from A to C and to write the deal, the, to write exactly. this this show, that's that's a key element here. Um, yeah. Matteo, you can you can stop sharing your screen if you if you want. And, this and, is and a think, room I'm sitting in right now, our B studio. Okay, you want to you want to move the camera so we can see, uh, or yeah, it's complicated. Sure. Okay. And I also before Matteo leaves, I want to talk about this whether this studio is a conflict with commercial studios in that city. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Matteo, let's take a tour. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't move. I can just. Yes, yeah, just the uh, sh shift the camera. Shift the camera. Yeah. Shift the camera. So now you can see the the, the our state of the art a uh, live room, which had just a uh, we, we we just finished our recording class, and on the other side is the A control room, which is um, which is our main control with the API console and a 5.1 surround system for monitoring and ATC loudspeaker. So. Yeah. Lovely. That's that's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. Thanks for that. Uh, I think that we we have enough time for for Mark to share his. Uh, exp uh, you're in mute, John. Uh, yes, we do have enough time for Mark, and um, um, we can edit a few minutes. We're going to be taking a few minutes out of some of these. So, Serge. We'll, we'll take this little bit out, but Serge, introduce Mark and let's go. Absolutely. So Mark Piadieu, our, uh, our man on the field in, in other emerging countries and other emerging locations as in Africa and Middle East. And Mark, hello uh, again, and uh, an honor to be sharing this moment with you. You can, you can take over and share your screen. We think that we were working in crazy places. I think that you you have a master in that, correct? Yes, I travel a little bit, thank you to WGG. So I visit countries I never imagined in my life when I was young. So it was a good experience to discover interesting places in the world. So, and you don't have too much time, I will go a little bit faster. Uh, some of the things I will talk is something that Mills and Matteo talked before. So I think not depend where you're talking. So I think the problems look like a little bit the same for everybody. The first thing I want to talk is that the multicultural business. Sometimes when you are going to Middle East in this case, the first uh, uh, thing you have to break is how they do business. It's quite different from Europe. So the first thing uh, is two steps usually. The first one is you have to break that you have the expertise to do the job. And the second one is that they have the confidence that you are the, the right one. And the second one, it takes sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. Uh, and this is, makes the process of starting the project a little bit slow, but you have to build this confidence so they can choose the right partners to do the business or the studio in most of the cases. The other thing that Matteo and, and Mills talked before is the thing that you have an, ex an experienced contractor. Usually, uh, what happened is the, they saw the render and they looked that they have to deliver something like this. 
and they don't look in depth the, the drawing. And sometimes happens something like this. This is the, the front wall of the post-production room you saw before. And what happened is someone look at, at the drawing and says, okay, this is, they have to look at the render we saw before. And some parts are missing. In this case, they remove the, the low frequency of problem. So when we did the testing, we realized that was a lot of boom in the, in the room. So, and we start investigating. And later we realized that this harmful resonator disappeared from the drawing. So someone thought that nobody will see behind the fabric. So nobody needs the planks or the, uh, the rock wool there. So they put only the fabric and that's all. And this is why the final testing or the tuning is very important. So you can look that the room is working as designed. So uh, this is the final, how it looks the room after it being corrected with the resonator in the in the front wall and the top and sometimes what happened in this case was another thing that they put the gap but was not perforated so it was not to the end so you have to look at the small details and this is something you have to teach the the contractor to look at these small details that will make the difference usually in low frequency that is one of the biggest major issues you have in the studios so these things is you have to teach very well the contractor. But sometimes you say, okay, we can uh, solve the problem of the unexperienced contractor bringing people from Europe. So you have a palette of tools and you send it with people to the, in this case, to Qatar, to the Middle East. You have all the tools, but later you have another problem. The power <laughs> system is not the what you have. So okay. you have to think everything <laughs> is something we talked before, you have to send until the last screw, you have to plan everything in detail. So you have to think the power, the screws, everything. And to solve this problem, usually the best is use uh, what we say mixed teams. So someone with experience from Europe and a local team there that you can provide the machines, the expertise of the area. If you need some screws, they know where you go to buy it. So the mixed teams, I think is the best solution in these cases that you need expertise from outside. And another issue, sometimes you go to the sites and, and you see this major set it says, oh, that's magnificent. So it will be no problem to bring anything inside since you have all this big set inside built. And later you realize the day you start uh, bringing the, to change this acoustic door that it now was a regular wooden door that the aisle is a flooring uh, in tiles. They don't support the, the weight of the forklift. So you have to think how you will bring the door inside a door that uh, is around one t uh, ton and a half kilos. So it's quite heavy. So, so you, a lot, to... you require a lot of preparation and, yes. uh, and pay attention to every single detail because this was a surprise. You arrived from the port to the side with the one ton door and you realize that your the last the last mile the last few meters you cannot push it to the to the right position because there's no way to manage it yes so at the end we solved this problem uh, bringing a lot of people and carry by hand but you have to plan to you need 20 people on the site to carry the door yeah so, this was the new set is an in another project uh, here uh, was a high reverberation. You see a lot of glass around the, the set. So we have to install hidden some uh, acoustic panels, sometimes behind these pl uh, wooden planks and also in the ceiling. But you look at the ceiling, you see a regular ceiling, says no problem at all. But when you start installing, you f see that some pieces start to fall. And this is why, because science inauguration, this was a, a running TV station. So. Science inauguration, nobody cleaned the, the, the ceiling. So it was a lot of dust. So we have to clean before start all the installation of. So you have to prepare, you have to prepare, prepare for the unexpected, basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to prepare for everything. And sometimes this changes the schedule of your programming a lot of the, on timing. Another thing, sometimes when you go a foreign country, uh, they told you 
today is a national day. It says, oh, that's nice. People is decoration wrapping the cars, so everything nice. But what's happened when you're trying to go to work is everybody is in the street and everything is collapsed. So it's a day you are losing. So sometimes you have to look at the small details. If it's a celebration there, is something happening that day because this changes the programming. And this is a big cost because you have to stay one day more without working on the site. So another thing that John mentioned before, it was the Imperial to metric system conversions. This is light indoors that the, are one of the best ones in the world are manufactured in US. And these ones are, uh, this is Qatar that they are using the metric system. So all the shop drawings, everything was in the imperial system in inches. But the worst thing, it was not that, because this is easy to solve the conversion, is that the holes and everything is done also in imperial system. So the screws are prepared for imperial yeah. screws, not metric. So you have to be sure you are bringing all the things you need to, and not only 10. Uh, if you need 10 per door, bring 20 because someone can be broken, you lose one. So you have to bring more than you need it. And this is, I think the major issue between the imperial and the metric system, the screws and things that you need to fix the doors to the, because the, the size is quite easy to, to compare one to another. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also the last thing uh, Sergio told a little bit is you have to be expecting the unexpected. Uh, we did a lot of projects in Middle East, usually it's a desert, but sometimes it rains. And one of the projects, uh, the country is not ready for the rain. So all the airport facilities outside. So most of the the panels in this case were soaked with water. So what you have to, in this case, to solve this is when you are bringing this uh, cheap products and bring more like the screws. If you need 10, bring 20. If you need 1000 square meters, bring 110. So a, li a little bit more always is better, a 10% just in case something is broken or it rains in the middle of the desert. That never happens. But in the bright side is that at the end, all these things are done. So here is the morning show built with acoustic treatment. You see a little bit here because it's hidden from the TV. So this is the evening show. Also, with, you can see some of the treatment there. So it's good to, and, and this is the new set with all the acoustic treatment be, below these plants, good plants, and also all the ceiling. It looks nice, it sounds good. And you solve the problem. That is what the client needs in this case. This is another project we saw a little bit before. It's a 6,000 square meter facility in three different areas. Zone one, zone two, this one, and zone three, that one. You have uh, three control rooms, one in each area. The post-production uh, Dolby Atmos room here, and also a mastering room here, video grading here, some uh, post-production rooms here and here. So it's a big facility. And it's the same, it was an experienced contractor, it was the first time you have to guide them and teach to look at the small details and go with him in all the process. At the end, you have a nice facility uh, built in the Middle East. I think it's the first one of this kind there. Yeah. And it looks very nice. You see the control room on the top left, on the bottom, the live room in zone one. This is zone two. On the right side, you see the post-production Dolby Atmos. On the left side, you see the, on the top, the control room, on the bottom, the live room. So and this is zone three, the mastering room on the right. On the left side, you see the control room, zone three. And more things that you discover when you are traveling and doing these crazy projects around the world is that you can see a lot of things, visit iconic buildings around the world, and discover amazing food, and see amazing sunsets in the desert sometimes. So the, the multicultural, multi-region experience has its perks. Let's call it yes. this way. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was an interesting panel. Uh, I, I want to I add one more question. How, because you, you um, certainly for us, you, you, you're dealing with a, some extraordinary countries. You're in Africa one week, you're in the Middle East, uh, which is 
it's, it's not a simple conversation to be in the Middle East. How are you dealing with languages? Is English the universal language on these projects? Uh, have you had to move around? Uh, is French sometimes used? Arabic? How, how are you handling languages? Mostly all the business is conducted in English. In English. Yes. I understand a little bit uh, the French, but I don't speak French at all. Only a yeah. few words. And the same in Arabic. I understand a few words and I know how to say one, a few things, just to survive. I know the numbers a little bit. I need sometimes to go to the ATM and get some money, <laughs> but that's did all. You, did you find that, because uh, we've done a number of projects now on both of those continents, um, that the drawings had to be translated or the drawings in English are okay? Usually they are translated. Uh, oh, also, they are trans usually the, the management, they know uh, English, so it's no problem. But sometimes in Middle East, the, the carpenter is from Philippines or from India oh. or from Nepal. So they translate to the local language. And when they translate, sometimes they want to simplify the drawing to make it easier for the carpenter. Uh -huh. And this is why sometimes they remove one, uh, two millimeters there. And <laughs> the, the flutter free are together. Yeah. And sometimes they remove <laughs> some plants. So this is the big issue when you are translating. And Again, the contractor is not experienced in acoustics, so they are translating at the best knowledge. Yeah. So that's a challenge. Um, yeah. That's a that's challenge. A, that is a challenge. Great. Okay, that that was uh, that was amazing. And uh, so as a as a wrap up of this, Bert, uh, we're we're almost on time, right? Yes, uh, we are on time. We are fine. We are on time. We, we, the AES is going to have a big hook. Yeah. I think, after ninety minutes, but anyway. But I think that we cover. Uh, three different parts of the world, three, three different types of, of projects, a, a, a state of the art, mm -hmm. world class recording studio in the heart of Beijing, a, an educational facility in Cali, Colombia, that, yeah. that will be the envy of a lot of other institutions all around the world. And in this case, uh, a TV station, the, the, a, a national TV station at, a, in Qatar, in Doha and a recording studio uh, guided by- Don't by forget Mark. about our FAMA tour. Even yes, though and, and of course the FAMA tour funny. that we did in Dominican Republic. Uh, on, a, on an experience point of view, I think that the, the multicultural flavor, okay, it's part of the asset, okay? What, what is the challenge at the beginning of the process? I think that it becomes part of the asset, part of the uniqueness of all these projects, okay? That makes them different that make us one of the kind. In, um, in my experience, um, 51 years now, having been almost all around the world in, in studios, understanding the culture is really important. Um, I remember when I went to Iceland for the first time to do what was the first studio in Iceland, it took me a few hours to realize that there's no wood on Iceland. <laughs> like, there's no wood, there, there's no trees. I think whatever trees they have, they give them names. So <laughs> you, that, okay, well, how are we gonna get the wood? And of course I was very used to working in wood. Then I remember going to Columbia a long time ago to do the first studio there, Phonovision. Now it's changed its name, still a, uh, one of the best studios in Bogota, if not the best. And suggesting that people built out of metal studs was just foreign. They didn't even know what I was talking about. Even air conditioning wasn't that common. Um, where, uh, so, you know, my first trip to China and Mills, you'll appreciate this. I, I had to learn that when somebody says yes in China, that actually doesn't really mean yes. <laughs> yes. It usually means maybe. <laughs> okay. And you have to be very patient. Um, yeah. when working in Mexico, there's one speed, one speed, you can ask for fast. You can be upset about slow, but there's one speed. So all these cultural innuendos are really exciting to learn. Having said that, everybody loves music. The music is the common thread. Music is the common theme, thank goodness. Even in this very strange moment in history, and we are living in a very strange moment, um, the music is gonna save us. And um, personal thanks to everybody on the panel here. I know some of you are up very late, some of you are up really early, or. We're interfering with our time zones. Thank you, AES, for allowing us to do this. Um, and Serge, thanks for navigating this tour for us. No, I thank John right, for, for, your, for your wisdom. 
Uh, Mr. Mills, Mateo, Mark, again, really appreciate it for your time and sharing your experience. And we will continue seeing each other yeah, in yeah, yeah. our next endeavors. Okay. We got to say goodbye in Spanish, Catalan, French, Chinese, English. Okay, so maybe that's that's a good finish. We can say goodbye each one in its own language. Okay. So Mark, Mills, you, have to, you have to do it in about five languages. Okay, Mar Mark can start. Mark can start in Catalan, saying goodbye. Adeu. Uh, Adeu. Okay, Mills, you can say goodbye in Chinese. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, Mateo. Adiós. 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 Suerte a todos. Okay. Chao. Chao a todos. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. 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 bye.